Good morning, everyone. It's Christoph Chu from Cobalt Banker Global Luxury. And today I want to talk about something that I've never really heard discussed by agents about seller renegotiations and mistakes, a, a big mistake that sellers often make when it comes to renegotiations. Uh, this, is, this is pertaining specifically to you've sold your home, you're under contract, and you're in escrow. And of course, buyers have a right to do inspections. So it's very important, first of all, to allow the buyers to do any and all inspections that they want on a house. That's a critical element. But here's the, make, the mistake that sellers often make, and in this particular case, I wanted to share specifically a real-world situation. So we're going to be closing escrow on a property on Tuesday that's a condo here in a luxury com complex built in the early to mid-80s, and pretty much it was in original condition, and we knew that. When we listed the property, myself and my associate and my myself and my partner Betty did our own visual inspections, and we're pretty clear after doing this for so many years on potential issues or issues that we see visually as agents in the unit. And we knew there was efflorescence, for those of you that don't know, is a white powdery substance on walls that typically is relating to moisture issues or leakage issues. Uh, there were some water leaks. There was some buckling of floors. There were various different issues that we were very, very well aware of. And we did, in fact, uh, make all those disclosures verbally to the buyers before even them making an offer. And oftentimes, uh, this is another bit of advice, I do recommend to sellers that they have a full home inspection, maybe even a chimney inspection and a sewer inspection uh, before they put the property on the market. Hey there, Anne. Hey, everybody. So anyways, as an example, we closed escrow two weeks ago on a four-unit building in Silver Lake, over $2 million, which is a big, big price for a four-unit building in Silver Lake. And these are 23-year past clients. We've done many, many transactions together, wonderful clients, and they always follow my advice. And when we list the property, we have a general inspection, uh, a sewer inspection. In this case, there were no chimneys. We did general inspection, sewer inspection, and oh, a pest control inspection and the retrofitting inspection. Again. One of my advices to all the sellers is disclose, 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 disclose. And in particular, I disclose before they make an offer, because if you if you make an offer and then you accept the offer and all of a sudden you then tell, oh, by the way, there's a problem with this, there's a problem with that, there's a problem with this, the buyers get upset, first of all, you haven't been honest and upfront. So if, when they come in and they see the unit and they're excited and you can tell they like it, that's when you say, hey, you know, we got this issue, this issue, that issue, this is what we know, please do your inspections. Uh, and then we'll discover what's going on. So anyways, this unit, we disclosed a lot of information that we knew of, and there were some things we didn't know of. So what happened is the buyers did their inspections. They, of course, found uh, water intrusion. They found mold. Uh, and then what they what we didn't do in this case is we did not do pre-inspections. They, they did a couple chimney inspections, and there was an issue with the chimneys. So then what happens? You know, we did sell the property as is, and we had told the buyers up front we were not going to renegotiate the deal after acceptance of the offer. Even though that's in writing in all my contracts, uh, it still happens, and I told the seller up front, if a buyer finds newfound information, that gives them an opportunity or gives them the right to ask for credits or repairs. Generally, as a seller, I never ever recommend you make repairs. Let the buyer do their own investigations, let them get their own estimates, and let them choose the contractors and give them a credit. But here's the advice. <clears throat> so. Newfound information came up, and the buyers did give us a request for a credit for the chimney issues. The credit, I felt, was reasonable. And in my conversation with the seller, and we did have this conversation even prior to having the inspections, I had basically the same conversation I'm having with you on Facebook, saying that if there's newfound information, if it's a reasonable request, we should consider it uh, very closely. And the reason is that when sellers just say no or they get upset and they say, you know what, we're not going to uh, give credits, we're not going to negotiate again, here's what happens is, as a broker and as a seller, you must disclose all information to the buyer. So let's just say, we say, you know what, we're not going to give you a credit for the chimney issues or the mold issues. Uh, you know, we kind of told you about it. The chimney we did not know about in advance, although I did have a feeling because I couldn't even open the chimney flue, which I did test and I couldn't open it. So I had a feeling there could potentially be uh, chimney issues and I did disclose that in my disclosure. And so basically I said to the seller, if we decide not to negotiate with these buyers and make the deal, what happens? We cancel the escrow, we put it back on the market. So first of all, brokers and buyers, they say, oh, 
this listing came back on the market. What happened? What's wrong with it? Why did it fall out of escrow, right? These are questions that anyone would have, and questions lead to um, fears and worries about what, what's the problem, what's the issue. So secondly is once an escrow cancels and you have to go back on the market, then what happens? You're required by law to give all existing reports and disclosures to the next buyer. So what happens is you fall out of escrow, you put it back on the market. Buyer's like, first of all, what happened? Why did it fall out of escrow? Then you give them the reports, then you give them the disclosures. So the next buyer may not even, first of all, be willing to pay you the price you had accepted from the first buyer. And secondly, guess what? They're gonna want the same credits or even repairs that the first buyer wanted. So again, sometimes buyers can be unreasonable and ask for too much, but that's when you hire an expert like myself to help guide you and suggest to you what is the best way to go. And in this case, uh, the request was reasonable. It was something that would have to be disclosed to the next buyer. And so we advised the seller to go ahead and accept it. And I felt we were, we did a good job in accepting it. We're very happy we accepted it. The sellers are happy we accepted it. And now we're closing escrow on Tuesday. So again, the advice is if you're a seller or if you're an agent, try to make sure to get pre-inspections of your property before you go to market. It will avoid a lot of issues. And on this $2 million fourplex that we sold and closed a few weeks ago, similar situation, we had all the reports before they even made an offer. I told them when they came to see the property what was going on. We sent them all the reports and we were very clear that we would not renegotiate on the inspections. The buyer still chose to do their own inspections. They had a geologist come out, they had a sewer line come out, they had a general inspector come out, so they did all the inspections that we did previously. And what happened? They did all their inspections. There was really no surprises. A few little things that came up in the geological that we weren't quite aware of, or we were not aware of. But what happened is the buyer signed off in the inspections and no renegotiation. So again, this is a very, very important factor because in today's world of real estate, first of all, actually not just in today's world, in the last 29 years of selling real estate, it's always the same thing. First of all, you gotta market it right to get the buyers in the door. Market it right and price it right. Number two, once the buyer's in the door, hopefully it's staged well, the house looks good, and it's, it's attractive to someone to make an offer. Number three, then you gotta get through the negotiations of coming to terms with the price and the terms of the sale. Then the next biggest hurdle is the inspections. That's typically, I would say the number one reason deals fall out of escrow is inspection issues. Meaning there's way too many issues that a buyer just doesn't want to deal with, or it's too expensive, or the requests come out from the buyers and the sellers just won't budge. So again, my advice is get inspections in advance as much as you can do. And you know, on a general home, it's maybe three, 4,000 square feet. You might spend a thousand, $2,000 on all of these inspections. However, you're gonna save yourself tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars when those inspections are done by the buyer because a great inspector will disclose. Of course, the next inspector might find some additional items, but if you disclose in advance, you tell them what you know, you give them all the information up front, the chances of you finalizing the deal, getting through the, the buyer's inspections are a lot easier and a lot smoother a lot smoother and will help you get the deal closed. Right, Ann? I mean, I know, Ann, you're a top, top broker. I'm sure you do that all the time. So I just thought I would share that advice this morning. I don't usually do Saturday morning um, uh, comments or live videos, but it's just something that's been, that went on this week. And I thought it's something that I'd never learned before because you kind of, in the world of real estate, you kind of just jump in and you learn by doing. And this is something that, again, you know, particularly when mold comes up or water intrusion or chimney issues, those can be very, very expensive. Uh, when I sold a $30 million house 10 years ago, newer house, uh, it was built in the late 80s or early 90s, but there were six chimneys in the house. And guess what? Every single chimney was one of those chimneys from a chimney company that had been recalled. So guess what? All, in this $30 million house, all six chimneys had to be torn out, torn down and rebuilt. Uh, which was a big deal and luckily we knew that we gave the credits and we closed escrow So again advice is think very thoughtfully when you have an inspection on your house uh, During a negotiation really ask the advice of your broker and don't make the mistake of canceling for a few thousand dollars here or there I've seen many sellers do that and ultimately down the road. They end up getting less money 
and more headaches because once you cancel the escrow, whether you're in escrow 10 days or 14 days, you've got to start all over again. I mean, putting it back on the market, remarketing the property, getting new buyers in to show it, getting new offers, new inspections. It just, and you know, with inspections, every time you inspect, they're going to find more things. That's just what inspectors do. Their job is to find all the problems. And oftentimes, sellers get upset with inspectors. This is my house. How can they do this? But that's the truth. Um, you know, buyers have a right and they should know what they're buying. I don't care if it's a $500,000 condo or $100,000 house if you're in a different marketplace or a $100 million house, right? You need to know what you're buying. And from a perspective of um, litigation, from an agent's perspective and a seller's perspective, disclose, disclose, disclose. Anytime you even have the thought, should I or shouldn't I, if you have that thought, should you disclose something, I say yes. So I'll say, well, should I mention this? I say, absolutely. Anything you think you need to talk about or share with a prospective buyer about your home, share it and let them know. Hey, Kathy Brown. So for, for those of you that don't know, Kathy Brown is my friend. She was an agent that was in the office I first started with back 29 years ago in Hancock Park. And I truly adore and admire Kathy Brown. I, she was a mentor to me. I watched her. I learned. I went with her on showings. And I truly appreciate and admire her because it's people like Kathy Brown and so many other agents over the 29 years of my career that I admired, respected, followed, and, and, and uh, mirrored and matched to see how they do business so I could incorporate it in myself. So I hope you like my little Saturday morning tidbit of information on uh, being cautious about negotiating on inspection issues, getting pre-inspections, because trust me, it'll save you time, headache, stress, and lots of money. So have a great Saturday after everyone. I'm finishing my work. We did our planning, our marketing, our planning for the week, did my little video, and now I'm off to have a nice, quiet afternoon. See you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.